Asian spec budget MPVs are mostly basic family haulers. But what if you could get an MPV that had all the advanced driver assist technologies? The top spec Honda BRV comes with all the latest active safety and driver assist features. But at almost 1.4 million pesos, it's more expensive than a lot of its MPV competitors. Is the extra cost warranted? Is it worth your money? Let's find out. Honda's designs have been on the conservative side lately, and the styling of the BRV is no exception to that. It's not quite as futuristic or experimental looking as some of its competitors, but for people like me who don't like the look of minivans, I think the more crossover like proportions of the BRV are more visually appealing. The BRV comes in three variants in the Philippines, and on the outside at least, the variants are very similar looking. Okay, so what we have here is the top spec Honda BRV. VX, and on the outside, it looks very similar to the V that we reviewed last time. The most noticeable difference would be the grille. The grille of the VX is finished in gloss black, while on the lower variants, it's finished in matte black. Now, like the V, this also comes with LED headlamps, but only the VX comes with an automatic on-off function. Down here, you get LED fog lamps. 17-inch um, wheels come as standard on all the variants, except for the base manual variant. Both the V and the VX come with power folding side mirrors with repeaters. And both the V and the VX come with a smart locking system. So you can lock and unlock the vehicle without having to get the key out of your pocket. To unlock it, just put your hand here. And if you leave the car, it automatically locks itself. Yeah, roof rails come as standard. You get drum brakes at the back and disc brakes at the front. And you get 204 millimeters of ground clearance. Now this particular unit comes with original Honda accessories like this BRV accent over here as well as this window um, visor over here. They're original Honda accessories that you can purchase separately. The BRV comes in five different colors and in keeping up with the mature theme of the BRV, none of them are particularly playful colors. You don't get red, yellow, orange, or blue. What you have are white, silver, black, and this one right here which is called opal white silver pearl which you can only get on the v and the vx okay so here at the back the vx looks very similar to the other variants it's very simple looking it's very minimalist you got led tail lamps over here a rear wiper comes as standard on all the variants the vx and the v come with a reverse camera and reverse sensors All variants of the BRV come with the same 1.5 liter four cylinder naturally aspirated engine that puts out 119 horsepower and 145 newton meters of torque. Now, those figures make it the most powerful among its Japanese and Korean peers, although Chinese competitors like the GN6 do have an advantage on power. Um, the engine is coupled to a CVT transmission on all the variants except for the base model, which comes with a six speed manual transmission. All the variants come with a manual lift gate. Cargo space is the same across the variants. You get a false flooring which you can remove or install depending on whether you need more height or a flatter loading space. With the third row up, you get about 220 liters of cargo space. If you fold the third row down, you get 530 liters. And if you fold the second row, you get 1032 liters. This particular unit comes with a rubber protector so you don't damage the backs of the seats when you're loading stuff. And you have more than enough space here for our sponsor for today. Introducing the Atto Sport Mobility Scooter. The world's most innovative mobility scooter. It folds into a small suitcase size and it has wheels so you can move it around like a trolley. It separates into two parts. It has leather seats and grips. 
an illuminated LCD dashboard, enhanced lighting for extra visibility. You can install optional armrests. It's perfect for seniors as it's easy to lift and unfolds in seconds. It has a maximum speed of 10 kph, shock absorbing, flat free tires, high ground clearance, advanced braking system, be free to travel anywhere, land, sea or air. It has 20 kilometers of continuous driving range. Engineered with flair, designed with passion for performance. Be active, be free, be yourself. Atto Sport, moving life. Now, it's not a particularly modern-looking interior, but compared to other Japanese and Korean MPVs in this class, it's not so bad. Uh, these glossy accents on the VX add a premium touch to the interior. You also get these leather wrap panels on the dashboard. Yeah, so the rest of the dashboard is made of hard plastic. This is made of hard plastic as well, but you get leather inserts on the door cards and the armrest over here is also leather wrapped. You get a very narrow center armrest over here, which is also wrapped in leather. The seats are wrapped in leather. Both front seats are manually adjustable and the driver's seat gets height adjustment. The steering wheel is leather wrapped. You get a lot more buttons here than on the V because this comes with full ADAS, which we're gonna test later. This also gets paddle shifters, which would definitely help if you want to overtake or if you're going downhill. The steering wheel tilts and it also telescopes. Um, you got a push start button over here. You get analog gauges, which is okay with me. Um, over here, you get an aftermarket 7 or 8 inch screen. It has Apple CarPlay, it has Android Auto, and it also has a reverse camera. You get single zone climate control, and thankfully, you get physical buttons over here for adjusting everything. Unlike the Brio, this gets actual USB ports down here. You got two of them and one 12 volt outlet. You got a manual handbrake over here. In terms of storage, the glove box is actually quite spacious. It's not dampened and that's okay at this price. There's not much space underneath the center armrest though. Okay, so here the second row space is quite okay. I have quite a bit of legroom over here. It's about five to six inches. Headroom is also very good. <clears throat> Um, it's just the width of the vehicle. It's pretty narrow, so um, I guess three people of my size will fit. Yeah, you get a center armrest here, but you don't get cup holders. You have three air vents up here and fan speed controls. One 12 volt outlet down there. Yeah, and the center, the seats recline like that, but you can't move them forward and back, uh, which could be a problem for the third row passengers. Anyway, let's check out what it's like back there. Okay, so back here, uh, space is better than I expected. I have about uh, an inch and a half of knee room. If you're five foot eight, that's okay. If you're a bit taller, um, that's gonna be a problem because you can't move the second row seats forward. Headroom is also pretty decent. I can fit two and a half fingers on top of my head. In terms of toys, you don't get dedicated air vents here at the back, but uh, the air coming from the, the blower fans over there should be able to reach you back here. Um, you get one cup holder on each side, one over here and one over there. And there's also a 12 volt outlet on this side. There are no 12 volt outlets on that side. Yeah, and the flooring is relatively low and flat. My knees are not at a very sharp angle. Um, yeah, it's not a bad place to be. I don't mind sitting here for shorter trips, maybe even slightly longer trips. Of course, this is not the best seat in the car. I'd rather be sitting at the front.
much of what you're paying for on the VX are its ADAS features, which are listed on the screen. Now, not all ADAS features are created equal, and so it's not enough that we list these features on the screen. We actually have to test them out. Okay, so the BRV VX comes with full ADAS, which includes adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, uh, blind spot warning, and autonomous emergency braking. So currently we have adaptive cruise control uh, engaged, and as you can see, my feet are not doing anything. Um, the thing about the adaptive cruise of the BRV though is that it has a it has a minimum speed of 30 kph. So below 30 kph you can't engage it, and if you go below 30 kph it automatically disengages. Let's see. Okay, so we should be slowing down right now, slowing down, slowing down. Below 30 kph, below 30 kph it disengages as you can see. Okay, so we should automatically slow down. As you can see, my feet are not doing anything. I'm not stepping on the brakes, and we are slowing down. And below 30 kph, you'll have to step on the brakes because uh, adaptive cruise disengages. So it's not really ideal for city use unless it's Sunday like this and there's very minimal traffic. Unlike the HRV and the Civic, the adaptive cruise control of the BRV has a minimum speed of 30 kph, which means that you can't activate it below 30 kph. And when you go below 30 kph, it deactivates, so you have to manually step on the brakes to stop. Its lane keep assist system also doesn't work below 70 kph, so a lot of its ADAS features are for highway use. It is the only Japanese or Korean MPV in its class though that comes with adaptive cruise control, and it's one of two that comes with lane keep assist. The other one is the Hyundai Stargazer. Now as a daily driver, the, the BRV is pretty okay, ride quality is okay, the noise insulation is not amazing, but it's not terrible either. Um, you do hear quite a bit of outside noise inside the cabin. If you're used to driving cars that are uh, a notch higher in price bracket, it might seem like you have a, it might seem to you like you're driving with an open window. Yeah, there's quite a bit of road noise and and here a lot of outside noise creeping in but again i don't think it's i think it's tolerable depending on your depending on what cars you're used to i would say <laughs> between the hrv and the brv the hrv feels like the more premium vehicle the nvh levels are not quite as good on the brv Quite a bit of outside noise enters the cabin, and you do feel the road imperfections a bit more. But it's not too bad overall, it's all very tolerable. Power is decent for its class, although because it has a CVT, it doesn't quite have the response that you get from the 4 speed of the expander, especially when coming from a dead stop. It is more fuel efficient though than the expander, especially on the highway. In the city with moderate traffic, I can get 12 kpl. And on the highway, I was able to get up to 23.5 kpl. The Honda BRV VX sells for 1,390,000 pesos. That's 95,000 pesos more than the V. And for that price difference, you get automatic on off headlights, side airbags, curtain airbags, and of course, ADAS or Honda sensing. I'm just a bit disappointed that its adaptive cruise control does not have a stop and go capability. But it's the only Japanese or Korean MPV in its price bracket that has adaptive cruise control. And even though it does not have stop and go capability, once you get to try it on the highway, you'd be thankful that you have it on long drives. So is it worth the extra 95,000 pesos over the V? I'd say for the extra active and passive safety features, and adaptive cruise control, yes it is.